All right. If you are a Donald Trump fan, you are about to meet the biggest advocate for the former president of the United States, Wayne Allen Root. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Hey, Stephen, I, you know, that's a pretty good intro because I don't think anybody has ever fought for this guy, defended this guy, supported this guy more than me since the day he came down that uh, escalator uh, in, I think it was like June 15th or 16th of 2015. So it's been a long, what is it, nine year battle? I think 15 to 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Nine years, <laughs> nine years I've been by this guy's side doing thousands and thousands of media interviews, defending and supporting Donald Trump like nobody else in the world. And he knows it, which is nice because every time he comes to Vegas, he tells me that. Uh, so, and he has me as his opening speaker most of the time. So, uh, and he's been a guest on my show 14 times. I don't know that anybody, including the Sean Hannity's and the Tuckers, I don't think anyone in the media has ever gotten Trump 14 times. So uh, I really appreciate him as much as he appreciates me. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Let, let's jump right into a couple of big topics. I, I want to go over the, the Fannie Willis situation as well as the Letitia James. Um, let, let's start with Letitia James. She ran on a platform of get Donald Trump before she ever knew there was a crime or a potential crime or an inkling of anything. She just knew that if you could get the top dog in New York, who just happens to be her political enemy, it would be really good for a paycheck. Right. So she she ends up basically wrecking Donald Trump's life, uh, trying to wreck his business, put hundreds of people in New York out of business. What are what are your thoughts on this Letitia James lawsuit and the the outcome of it? Well, Letitia James and Fannie Willis, you could put in the exact same bucket, you know? Look, let, let's be honest. If I was a corrupt, no good, evil, Marxist scumbag who hated the United States, and I wanted to be rich and famous while I was trying to limit everyone else's ability to be rich and famous, and I was a lawyer or a prosecutor, what would be the easiest way to get million dollar book deals, my own reality TV show, a talk show, a seat on The View, uh, you know, $200,000 a speech, the love of millions of Democrats, I would prosecute Donald Trump. I'd make up charges and I'd try and take all his wealth away and try and put him in jail for life. Now, keep in mind, I would never do that to anybody, including the worst people on the left that I hate. You know, the Obamas, the Bidens, the Clinton crime family. I'd put them all in jail for real crimes, but I would never make up a crime just to benefit me. But the left is like that. And that's exactly what is behind the motivations of someone like Letitia James and Fannie Willis. They're corrupt, they're evil, they're rotten to the core. They are scumbags, excuse my language. I'm from the streets of New York. That's what you call a dirty, rotten, evil person, a scumbag. And those two are the highest order of scumbag in the world. And they're trying to take down a guy who's made billions and created millions of dollars in taxes or tens of millions maybe hundreds of millions for the state of New York and thousands of jobs. And between Fannie Willis and Letitia James together, they've created zero jobs in their life. They've made zero dollars in the private sector. They've never started a business. They've never run a business. I wouldn't put them in charge of a Dairy Queen. They'd screw it up and put it out of business in a week. I wouldn't put them in charge of a Nevada brothel. They'd screw it up and put it out of business in a week. So they're losers and they're jealous of Donald Trump. That's all it comes down to. I've said this about all the characters that go after Trump. They're all jealous. They're green with envy that they've never made billions. They're not a worldwide celebrity and they don't have a wife that looks like Melania. They're all jealous and they want to make themselves famous. How do you become famous if you're a nobody? You take down the king. That's all this is about. And also destroying America because they're communists. So it's all the above. Oh my gosh, you like that could have been one of your top 10 breakdowns that you had before. <laughs> one like, of my best rants, my yeah, root rants. <laughs> yeah, so don't worry, we got the whole thing recorded. Good. I mean, send it know, to I, me. I like it. <laughs> I, I had thought I had thought about, you know, just getting a job and and that uh, compensation and retirement package, but you're right. Book deals, a view, a seat on speeches. the speeches, speeches I, I and mean, and jealousy yeah. on top of it. And jealousy and a chance to be rich and famous yourself because you took down someone by attaching yourself to someone who's famous. You know what's ironic, Stephen? 
I wrote the book. I don't have it in front of me. I wrote the book called Trump Rules. It's in back of me somewhere. Uh, one of those books is Trump Rules, and it's got Trump on the cover. So you probably see it behind me. It was a bestseller. I wrote it. I've followed Trump since I'm 18 years old, and I was a son of a butcher without two cents to my name, and I was a freshman at Columbia University. I'd gotten into an Ivy League school, and there was Trump building all these buildings in New York City, and he became my hero, and I said, I want to be that guy. So I followed his life, and I studied him, and I tried to be like him every step of the way, and I wrote down all the lessons I learned from following him. And then I wrote this book, Trump Rules, and it became a bestseller. And ironically, it, you know what they're doing sounds like it's out of the book, Trump Rules. I wrote that book. If you want to be famous and rich, then you study other people who are famous and rich, or you attach yourself to someone who's famous and rich and their fame rubs off on you and you can become a celebrity too. You know, I, I have this talk show and who are the people that are on my show all the time? President Donald Trump, President Trump's cabinet, United States senators, governors, congressmen. And, and, and by them being on my show, I become a celebrity, right? I learned from Trump. They took that same lesson and they twisted it a little bit and they just said, by attacking a celebrity, by taking him down, and ripping him off and taking everything away from him and sticking him in jail for life, you become a celebrity because you've grabbed, you've ripped some of celebrity off him. It's almost right out of my book, Trump Rules, but I didn't say rip a celebrity down. I said, attach to a celebrity, somehow be a partner, a business partner, or interview the celebrity. I didn't say rip them down, but they took the opposite tack. And I get it. I understand what they're trying to do. They're evil, they're godless, they're communists, they're ruining the United States of America. What they're doing to Trump, I'm a Jew. This is Nazi Germany. It's not the Holocaust, don't get me wrong. No one's ever gonna take me down for saying it's the Holocaust. There is no Holocaust, nobody's killing people. What it is is 1930s pre-Holocaust Nazi Germany. When they were literally taking you if they didn't like you and putting you in prison, putting you out of business, censuring you, stopping you from talking, putting your business out, throwing rocks through your window, that's what's going on now. Eventually, Stephen, if we don't stop this now and nip it in the bud, it's going to move on to the next phase, which is a lot worse. So we better stop it now because this is not America and what they're doing is un-American. Yeah. Okay, let's head down to Georgia for a minute. We've got uh, District Attorney Fonnie Willis. It's kind of a similar situation where you know, we find out she sends Nate Wade. He's having these secret meetings with White House legal counsel, secret meetings with the J6 committee. Now he's being paid nearly a million dollars, much of that under the table so that they can go on luxury vacations. <laughs> uh, but it, it's Trump that's trying to ruin her and that it's racism that's trying to ruin her. <laughs> the fact that she broke up a marriage, had a sexual affair, cheated, broke all of the rules of being a good lawyer and a good boss. What are your thoughts on Fonnie Willis? Well, actually, the worst thing that she did is that she paid the guy that she's having sex with 600 grand. So right off the bat, that makes that makes him a prostitute. That makes her like the, 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 the guy paying for it, the John. So she's the John. He's the hooker. She's paying him 600 grand. But then he uses the 600 grand of taxpayer money to go on luxury vacations with her. So I mean, it's all so horrible and it's all so wrong. And it's all so typical of most politicians because they're all dirty. You know, even on the Republican side, most of them are dirty. Not all of them, but on the Democrat side, all dirty. On the Republican side, a lot of them are dirty. That's the reason why so many politicians and government employees, bureaucrats, you know, stab Trump in the back because someone's paying them to stab him in the back. He's killing the gravy train for the deep state and the D.C. swamp. That's what he did as president. That's what he's scaring them now. And that's what he's going to do when he gets in again is destroy their gravy train. And they are mad about that. They want the gravy train to keep going. They want to keep stealing from the taxpayers. So they're willing to do anything to stop them. But they don't see the irony that by doing anything, meaning persecuting him and making up charges that the average person could see are ridiculous that have never been applied to another human being or another businessman or another president in history. By doing all that, they're killing themselves and they're making him a martyr and, and a hero and superhero, superhuman, and much more palatable to the average person that did not vote for him in 2020. So they're, they're just destroying themselves. And you know I'm right. 
I don't have to prove I'm right. Look at every poll out there today. Trump gets more and more popular. The momentum is amazing. He just, uh, a poll came out yesterday, very credible poll. I think it was Harris X poll. He's up by nine over Joe Biden. And you know, every poll oversamples Democrats because they don't look at likely voters. They poll registered voters, many of whom are never going to go to the polls. Likely voters probably choose Trump by 12, 13, 14, 15 points. So he's winning by a landslide. I don't know if the election will be terribly rigged. I'm sure it will be. And it may look like he wins close. But if he wins close, it's only because they made him a martyr and they convinced so many people, especially in blue collar America, that our government and the Democrats are out to get us and destroy us and wipe us off the face of the earth. They hate us. They want to criminalize our lives and they want to take all our money away, make us slaves and serfs. That's what the average American now believes. The Democrats did it to themselves. By persecuting Trump, you've made Trump bigger than life and he's going to be the next president. Even if you rig it, I think you can only rig about 10 points and Trump will win by 12 to 15. So he'll wind up the winner. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I think that uh, who will be his vice presidential pick is actually really important because when he wins, that vice president likely can become president for eight years, which means conservatives dominate the country and policy for 12 years. He's put out a list of names like Christy Nome, Tim Scott. He just added Ron DeSantis, which kind of shocked me. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Who, who are you thinking that uh, he will likely choose from? Well, you know, I, I got to tell you, I think that list is bogus. And I'm not saying you're making it bogus. I mean, the whole media has mentioned that list. You're just repeating yeah. what the whole media says. And to my knowledge, unless I got this one wrong, and I don't usually get things wrong, it was Laura Ingram who two nights ago said to Trump on Fox News, here's a list of people I'm going to name. And she named this list and she said, is this your short list for vice president? And Trump said, yes, I think it is. Those are all good people. Well, that's what anybody would say. If I was running for president and you said, this guy, that guy, this gal, that gal, I go, yes, they're all wonderful people. They're on my short list. And maybe none of them would be on my list. He never said they're on the list. He said, yes, I agree with you. They could be on my list. That means nothing. Donald Trump would never let you know that. He's going to throw your, you off the scent. He might have someone whose name is not on that list. And they're all on the list, Stephen. But so's the name that he's eventually going to pick, which you didn't even mention. And, and he'll never tell you that because he wants it to be a big surprise. And he wants it to be a big unveiling. And may, you know, you know him. He loves bigger than life news <laughs> events. So he doesn't want to tell you who it is. So if I'm Trump, I agree with any name that someone tells me. Yes, yes, uh, Paul Ryan, yes, he's on the short list. <laughs> you know, he hates Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, yes, he's on the short list. Liz Cheney, sure, she's on the short list. Nikki Haley, yeah, I love Nikki Haley. Eventually, he's not going to pick any of them. He's not picking Mitt Romney, but he might say yes to anything you say to throw you off the set. So are those people on the list? Maybe. And is there another five on the list? that Laura Ingram didn't mention and Trump didn't mention, I would think probably yes. Uh, my personal choice, if I was able to be the chooser, and I'm not, only Trump will choose, and it's up to him. He's got to be comfortable with it. I would choose Vivek Ramaswamy. I think if Trump wins younger voters, he wins the election by 25 points. In other words, he's already got everybody older. He's got everybody white. Literally, the whole white America supports Trump. So if he can name a minority... And, and that makes Scott a decent choice, too. That makes Ben Carson a decent choice. If he can name Sarah Huckabee, who wasn't named on that list, and she gets you suburban women, and, and she's relatively young, I think that's another good choice. I, I, what it comes down to is he needs to, to go after the people that he doesn't have right now. And that's black voters, minority voters, and female voters, and young voters. And I think Vivek answers the minority and the young voter question. I think Sc Senator Scott of South Carolina answers the, the minority and black constituency. I think a Sarah Huckabee, who wasn't mentioned, would, would be very attractive to every suburban housewife in America. So uh, every suburban working woman in America, forget a housewife, every suburban woman in America is what I meant to say. So I, I think there's a lot of choices and some of which have not even been named yet. He's very comfortable with Dr. Ben Carson. I hear he's on the final list. So I wouldn't put too much credence in that list that everyone in the media claims is now the list. 
Okay. No, uh, great, great insight. Okay. Final question. Then I'll get you out. I know how busy you are. Uh, is, is, uh, it going to be Trump versus Biden or are they going <laughs> to replace Biden? And if so, who, who are you thinking as the Democrat nominee? Great question, Stephen. Great question. So there was a poll out last night and everyone's talking about it, that if they replaced Biden with Gavin Newsom, Trump beats Gavin twice as bad as he beats Biden. <laughs> and, and if they replace him with Kamala, he beats Kamala almost tw almost twice as bad as he beats Biden. So the the article's conclusion is, or the pollster's conclusion is, it, it, there's no point in replacing Biden because you can't do yourself any better with Kamala and you'll do worse with Gavin Newsom. He beats Newsom, I think it was like 50, 51 to 32 or something like that. He yeah. kills him. You know, Newsom has a $73 billion budget deficit now. Two weeks ago, it was $58 billion. Now they've announced it's 73. In another month, They'll announce it's 88, and then in six months, they'll announce it's 100 billion. It's an albatross around his neck. He's mismanaged California. He'd bankrupt America. No one's voting for Gavin Newsom. He's dead. Kamala Harris is the most unpopular human being on the entire planet. She's dead. They can't have her. Joe Biden is failing in his brains and his health. Nobody can have him. He's got to be gotten rid of one way or the other. I believe at the convention this summer, the conclusion that that pollster did not reach was, why didn't you ask how Michelle Obama does against Donald Trump? Because I have argued for two years now that Biden's finished and Michelle Obama will be the next nominee for president of the United States. They will insert her at the convention. And by the way, it, you never have your national convention in a city where you have no chance to win or no chance to lose. You have it in a battleground state, a purple state, where by having a lot of publicity and spending a lot of money and having a lot of media in that state, you could actually win. So you might have it in Milwaukee, like the Republicans are. You might have it in North Carolina. You might have it in Arizona, a uh, state up for grabs. Democrats chose Chicago, Illinois, where they have no chance to lose. They're only gonna win Illinois. They'll never lose Illinois. So why would you have a convention there? Because they knew all along that they were gonna announce to the surprise of the world, march her out on the stage, Michelle Obama, a girl born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. It's her town. She's Mrs. Chicago. That had to be their plan from day one. Now, the one fly in the ointment is everyone claims she doesn't want it. That may be true. And maybe that's why they got to stick with Biden or they'll switch to somebody else. But I'm just telling you, in my opinion, it's always been the script that they were going to replace him with Michelle. And, and the fact that Karl Rove, and David Axelrod go to such pains to tell you she doesn't want it, she hates politics, she'll never do it, she's out of the question, is going to be the reason she's doing it. She will pop up on that stage, in my opinion, I could write the script, I should write it for her. And the script is, they didn't, they said I didn't want it, I don't want it. They said I hate politics, I do hate politics. They said I'd never do it. I thought I'd never do it. I don't want to do it. They said I'm having too much fun. I am. I got to be crazy to do this. But this man is a Hitler. This man is a Nazi. This man is a dictator. This man will take your freedom away. We must stop the boogeyman, the monster. We must stop Donald J. Trump. And so I will be your presidential nominee. I could write the script. That's why they're all saying she doesn't want to do it. She'll never do it. She never has been interested in doing it because that's a great script. That's the Democrats way of saying she will be the nominee. And they picked Chicago for a reason. You mark my words. If they're smart, that'll be their choice. Now, can Trump beat her? Yes, I think he could beat anybody. But she would be the toughest one, the only one with a chance, because I think he's making great inroads in the black community and with minority voters. And if he names the right VP, he'll really make inroads with minority black and young voters. She's the one person that could pull black voters back in again. She's the one person that could get women who are starting to break and go for Trump back to the Democrats. She's the one person that could excite young people and bring them back to the Democrats. So if they're smart, that is their plan. I don't know if they're that smart. They may stick with Biden and think, well, might as well just steal their election. That may be their plan too. So we'll find out. But my prediction, Stephen, Michelle Obama. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, this has been a fun conversation. I know you've got to run. Where can I point people towards online to follow you? 
Uh, root for America. Easy. Root for America. I'm Wayne Root. It's what I do all day. I root for America. And right at the top of that website, not only all my opinions and all my commentaries and all my social media is there, but at the top it says, watch Wayne on TV, listen to Wayne on the radio, listen to Wayne's podcast, and you click on any one of those tabs and you're automatically, I mean, I'm on like 20 different streaming stations and I'm on 20 different radio stations and I'm, I'm my podcasts are everywhere from Apple to Spotify. Click on it and you connect to all of my shows. So you never have to think, where's Wayne? Just go to rootforamerica.com and you can watch me on TV, listen to me on the radio and listen to my podcast anytime. And a library of all my old uh, ones from last week, yesterday, they're all there as well. Rootforamerica.com, simple. Wayne Allen Root, thank you so much for coming on and having a brilliant conversation. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Stephen. God bless you.